Summer is finally here and fishing season is back in full swing. On our first fishing tips of the summer, Ray Gildow of the Nisswa Guides League teams up with an AIS inspector to show us what you can expect before entering or exiting a lake. I'm talking today to Ben Collette, who is one of the inspectors on one of the lakes here in central Minnesota. And he's going to walk us through the, the process a little bit about what inspectors are looking for when you put your boat in or out of the water as they're working to prevent the spread of all these aquatic invasive species that we have in Minnesota. So Ben, maybe you could just give us a little quick tour of what it is you're looking for when a boat comes down here. Happy to do so. Okay, um, so first we have, a, we have a series of questions we ask. Um, it's you know, trying to, to find out uh, what lakes the boat's been to and then what lake it might go to next. We ask how long it was in the water in the last lake, because that's a factor. And then we do a, an exterior inspection, check, you know, the outside, the underside of the boat, the motor, all that. Um, check the live wells and then check the lines, anchor lines too. A lot of stuff. So you want the plugs out for sure. Plugs out for when sure. When you leave the lake and when you come back in, you want as much water out as the live wells. And you're actually oh, yeah. encouraging people to sponge them, aren't you now? Yep, yep, as much as possible. You gotta get that water out of there. Because the uh, aquatic invasive species like the uh, zebra mussels, the villagers as they're called, are mm -hmm. so microscopic, you don't really don't see them with the yep. eye, do you? You won't even see them. So if you uh, find a violator, what do you do? You just basically are educating them from your perspective, aren't you? Yep, yep, we do our best to educate them. We tell them, you know, exactly what it is, where they went wrong, and then um, if we do find zebra mussels, we have to contact a game warden. They'll they'll come and talk to the person, then it's then it's up to their discretion whether or not they, they take it further. So plugs out when you bring the boat into the lake, plugs out when, you, when you're taking it out of the lake, mm -hmm. all the water out of the, the boat as much as you can. Yep. You encourage people to drop the bigger motors down to get all the water out of the actual engine, don't you? Oh yeah. Before that happens. And then what's the five day rule you've been talking about? Well, it's a, it's actually a form of decontamination. Uh, five days in a dry place um, is enough to kill zebra mussels. It's um, anything that could be on there. If you give it five days to dry, it'll be dead by the end of those five days. And for people who don't have five days, then it's just all that more important to do the things you're talking about, isn't it? Oh yeah, and if and if they don't have the five days and they are at a risk, we have the DNR and us have, have several different decontamination stations set up. That's Ben Collette, who is giving us some tips today on how to prevent the spread of AIS. If you've enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution to Lakeland Public Television.